Uh, thank you, Director. Senator Scott. Thank you, sir. Last month, the CFPB announced that it was proposing to expand its own authority to supervise technology companies, a move that should be called out for what it is, another attempt to stifle financial technology and financial innovation. I firmly believe innovation in finance has made it easier for lower income families to access financial services, such as basic checking and savings accounts, as well as even more complicated products like mortgages. Private sector competition and new innovative technologies can bring financial opportunity to all Americans. While new technology needs appropriate supervision and guardrails, American innovation should be encouraged, not crushed by bureaucratic red tape. And yet the CFPB ended its financial innovation sandbox, which offered safe harbors to firms attempting to further democratize finance in a safe manner. While I understand the need to ensure consumers are not targeted or taken advantage of by bad actors, what rationale supports preventing responsible, well-regulated companies from releasing new products within the confines of a safe harbor program? So let me address everything you've said. So first of all, let me just share, you said something earlier that I totally agree with, that the competitive markets really deliver a lot, especially when there's clear rules of the road that are consistently enforced. I actually am a huge believer in the role of technology to really bring a lot of benefits. It's why we proposed our open banking section 1033 rule, but you mentioned oversight of the large tech companies, payment apps, we are not expanding our authority. They are currently subject to our enforcement authority. And I think in our judgment, rather than resolving issues through litigation, we should look at those large firms serving tens of millions of people and make sure that they're following the law just like small banks are doing. Supervision of non-banks and banks is a key way that makes those laws consistently enforced. So I'm trying to make sure that where we see fraud, and there is on some of these payment apps huge amounts of fraud, where we see collection and surveillance of data, we need to make sure that it's compliant with the law. But I totally agree with your question that we want firms to be able to get products out to the market if they're, if they're with the right guardrails. And you ask about the safe harbors we conducted an analysis of these special no action letters. And here's what we found. Some of the companies receiving them claimed that they were endorsed by the government or that they were the exclusive provider. So what we've done is we want some of those programs to be applicable to lots of organizations, not just crowning one member of the industry. That's really what competition is about. It's not about picking winners and losers, sir. Well, I, I, I certainly wish that were true for the government, but certainly our government, particularly the Biden administration, and particularly the CFPB, seems to want to pick winners and losers. I mean, as a guy who was in business for several years and started several businesses from scratch, the one thing you need from your government is not competition, it's certainty and predictability. When you set the rules of the road, step back and give the market time to actually absorb the changes, innovate, be creative, take the calculated risk, and come to a conclusion whether it works for the business. If it doesn't work for the business, it's because the consumers are not benefiting from the product or the services in the marketplace. When that happens, the brilliance of a free market system works when the oppressive nature of your agency and the Biden administration comes in and starts tweaking the rules of the road, as, as you would suggest, some thousands of, of thousands of fintech firms working in the marketplace, and some, that could be five, it could be 500. I'd, I'd love to see what that list looks like from your perspective, but the reality of it is that when you have an opportunity to engage in a free market system with the rules of the road without the government being oppressive and stifling innovation, then the consumer benefits. If you want to have access to more opportunities for the poorest Americans, the way that you get there is by having a framework and a playing field that doesn't discriminate. Well, the beauty of the financial technology innovation engine is that you have more people accessing more products, more services with, with, with an app. That, that's what brilliance looks like. But when you have- And I, I agree with everything Let me, let me finish. But when, you, when you have the uncertainty brought to the marketplace by agencies, the challenge that we see is that 
the ROI goes down, the cost benefit analysis goes up. And so players in the market space, they leave. And what that leaves poor families to do is to go into brick and mortar only and make decisions. There's just a better way. And hopefully we'll have a second round to get some more questions. Thanks, Senator Scott. Senator Reed of Rhode Island's recognized. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and, and Director, thank you, particularly for your uh, 